So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build the new product that Nibijona has just released. It's called the Hummingbird F4 Brushless. It is a beautiful drone, as you guys can see right here. It originally comes with a yellow frame, yellow props, and a black canopy. But in this one, I chose the colors blue and black because it looks very beautiful. Very majestic. All right, now let's get started with this build. All right, so to start off the build video, first thing we're going to do is start with safety. Second thing we want to start off is taking the things out of the package. Here is my beautiful brushless cockroach frame in color blue. Second thing we want to get out of the box is the Mark II VTX cam, 25 milliwatts. It is a beautiful canopy. As you guys can see, it looks very similar to the Goober canopy. The only difference is the camera uh, bracket in the back. You guys see it is a little bit uh, wider, a little bit longer because of the VTX. You guys can see right there, and here is a regular Goober canopy. There is no second mount bracket. It's just a camera that it's holding, not a VTX. Now we want to go ahead and get the motors out. Right here I have the Nubidron Plat Edition brushless motors. There are two different options that you guys get to choose. There are the gold, which are stator size 0802 18,000 kV motors, or the Plat Edition, which are the same stator size 0802 but they are 20,000 kV motors. I recommend these with a throttle cap of 85%. They feel very powerful and you get that little bit of efficiency. But if you guys are looking for just efficiency, but still a good amount of power, I recommend the gold with no throttle cap. These just give you that little bit of extra oomph, if you guys know what I mean. So let me go and get the motors out and then we're gonna go ahead and install them. That's the first thing we wanna go ahead and do, install the motors. And most people are gonna go ahead and wonder what color wire goes where. And I'll show you guys right now as soon as we get this out. So we just got the beautiful motors out. And with each set of motors, either gold or plaid, you guys will get a spare set of motor connectors. These will come in handy. And you guys, I believe, also get like an extra one or two screws. Now, I believe you guys are going to go ahead and ask what side is the front. Either way is the front, honestly, front or back. Doesn't really matter. There's no such thing as a front or back until you add the flight controller. So first thing we want to do is go ahead and add the top left motor, which is going to be color red. And in the top right, we're going to go ahead and add the black wire motor. So you guys can probably see that we are a little bit more zoomed in. So you guys can see and get a more closer in-depth video. So as you guys can see, first thing you want to do is obviously take out your motor screws. Then you want to go and get the red wire, make sure it's on the top left and make sure the wires are going into or facing the Nubidron logo which is on the bottom of the frame. Next you want to go and flip it over and make sure the lines of make sure the holes sorry of the motors are aligned with the holes on the frame. Once you have that go ahead and get your motor screw and then put it in and start screwing. Obviously once you get the first motor screw in there the other two will be a lot easier. So we just got the top left motor screwed on firmly. Now, um, obviously you guys don't want to screw it on super tight because then you will end up risking either stripping the screw or the motor, which is something you don't want. I don't recommend adding Loctite because it is screwed onto plastic than the motor. It has a really good amount of grip with the plastic. So please do not use Loctite because you will end up trying to, when you try to take out a screw, you will end up stripping it and it will be super hard to take out. So make sure you give it a good little turn not too tight of course and after that you want to do the same process for the next three motors which I'll show you guys right now in a time lapse if you guys are gonna build small micro builds like these right here or whoop size I recommend cutting your nails because it was a little bit difficult getting my screws with my hand because of my long nails as you guys can see we got three individual spare screws so if you guys lose one you guys got three right here to lose or to add back on um, we also got spare motor connectors so go ahead and pack this somewhere nicely where you won't forget it next you want to go ahead and get is the flight controller you guys see we got around one two three four five we got five grommets five little gummies so we got we'll need to use four so you guys get a spare one and then we go ahead and add these on here and then we're going to go ahead and pack. Now the next thing we want to go ahead and grab is the flight controller because that's what we're going to install next. So we have five gummies right here or grommets as you guys like, would like to call them. Um, so you guys only really need to use four so you have a spare one in case you lose one in a crash or just lose one by trying to grab it and bounce it off your hand because that has happened to me a couple of times. When you guys go ahead and install these make sure to push it in. You should hear like a little bit like of a 
I don't know what kind of sound that is, but it's like a So once I go ahead and install these, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to install it into the frame. Now, once we have installed the grommets into the flight controller, you wanna make sure that you install the con flight controller in the correct way. In order to do that, you guys can see this little white arrow right here indicates that that is facing forward for the flight controller or that is basically the front of the drone right here. I don't know if you can see it right there, the little white arrow. So now I want to make sure that that motor, the red motor connector is your top left and your bottom right. And of course, get your battery lead, make sure it's sticking out the back right, align the frame with the grommets. Once that is on there pretty firm, go ahead and grab a screw and go ahead and put it on the front one first because the left, right, and back are gonna be for the goober canopy. And once we get that on there, of course, just like the motor screws, don't screw it on too tightly because then you will end up stripping either the screw or most commonly the plastic of the frame. And you don't want that happening because then you will have to replace the frame. Make sure your grommet does not look super squished. That is how you know that it is on too tightly. Now let's go ahead and get started with. Now for some reason, a lot of people skip this step. I actually highly suggest it. You wanna go ahead and grab your motor wires and twist them. Grab them from the head and twist them a little bit. Twisting them left or right doesn't really matter as long as you twist them and they feel firm. Don't twist them too much, obviously, because that will probably cause a problem. And then once you have twisted it, make sure to align it with the connector. Make sure the pins that you guys can see right here are actually facing outwards, not inwards towards the other connector. Once we have done that, I'm gonna go ahead and do that process again for the next four motors. It is a little bit tricky to get the motor connectors in there, but it just takes a little bit of time, and then you should be good. Of course, we have to do it with the next three motors. Now the motors are on there nice and twisted. You guys can see right here, it looks super, super clean. Now what you wanna go ahead and do, don't forget that this is the front of the drone because of the white arrow that is pointing away from you. I'm going to go ahead and make sure you point it now to the left and as you guys can see this little white plug right here you want to go ahead and plug in your Goober Canopy or the Mark II VTX Can 25 milliwatt on there. Now when you go ahead and plug this in make sure to be nice and gentle it will take a little bit of patience because this is a little bit tricky. And when you go ahead and do this make sure that your red wire is facing left and that your white wire is facing right. Now as I said this step can be a little bit tricky but patience is Patience and being gentle is key. All right, it's on there nice and tight. Of course, don't push it too hard because then you will end up breaking the connector. Now that since that is on there, what I do for the antenna placement, I honestly just put it back to regular, like how it was when it came out of the box. Or what you guys can do is leave them out, but I don't really like to do that because that will cause, that can cause actually a motor connect, oh, sorry, not a motor connector, a wire to rip. Once we have that on there, go ahead and grab your antenna, put it through the hole, and then go ahead and get your VTX canopy. Now that we and have the camera connected, I would like to go ahead and grab the canopy, and I put the, R, the RX antennas the same way they came out of the box, just facing backwards, and align the holes from the canopy to the frame and the grommets. And of course, screw on the screws. So now we got the canopy on there nice and tight. I don't really recommend twisting the wires on the camera or the VTX because they are kind of t uh, hard. So I just leave them as is. Um, make sure that your grommets don't look super squished because that can cause the flight controller to be uneven. And when you try to fly in, act in uh, stabilized mode, that will cause the drone to drift even though you have trimmed it or you have calibrated the accelerometer on bait flight. So just make sure they're on there nice and firm, but not too tight because that will cause unevenness. Now your next step is gonna to go to be installing the propellers. Uh, if you're running props in, make sure your top left prop is clockwise and your top right motor is counterclockwise. If you're running props out, vice versa, but I recommend props in. So top right is counterclockwise and your top left is clockwise, which is this propeller right here. If you guys don't know what clockwise or counterclockwise is, please read a book or go on Google. 
Of course, your back right is going to be the same as your top left. And your back left is going to be the same as your top right. And the next step is to go ahead and grab your transmitter, turn it on, set up a new model, and switches. Welcome to OpenTX. I'm going to be doing this with the Tyranix QX7. Uh, this is FR Sky Protocol. If you guys have a different protocol, such as DSM or Futaba or any other protocol out there, um, search it up on YouTube on how to set up new models and switches. There's many videos out there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this because it will be a little bit quicker and I don't want the video to be like at one hour long. Hopefully you guys like my background. The next step is to go ahead and go on Betaflight. As I said, check for channel mapping, make sure it is correct. Make sure to connect it via micro USB. If the first cable is not allowing you to connect to Betaflight, I would go and try different sets of cables because that is the most common problem that happens when you try to connect to Betaflight and it won't allow you to. So go ahead and go to receiver tab and make sure that it is AETR1234 if you're running FR Sky, but if you're running DSM, you can go ahead and go to Spectrum. It also tells you right there in the menu. Now I'm gonna go and get my joint inputs and this is how you know that it is set up correctly. You guys can see the inputs moving. And now you wanna go and go to uh, modes tab and make sure the modes are set up correctly. So arm was SA or aux one. And then modes was auxiliary two, which is which was switched B, SB and uh, flip of the crash or turtle mode was auxiliary three, which is SA. Oh, this is actually incorrect. You wanna move it to the right. There you go. And now uh, this should be, I almost forgot to mention about the throttle cap. Now, first thing, of course, check if your configuration is correct, props in. You wanna go and go to PID tuning and then go to rate profile settings and throttle limit right there. It is at 100. Uh, 20,000 kV is just very, very powerful for a brush bolt that is 1S. I like to add it to 85%. And uh, after that, uh, we're good to go. Here's a quick mistake that a lot of people have been asking. I've been seeing a lot in the, the Nibu John tickets. So when you're in the modes tab and you know, in the arm, and people try to arm and it says disabled. It says disabled because that is a safety feature that Betaflight has added, not because the flight controller is not uh, allowing you to arm. It's just a safety feature that Betaflight has added so that your quad does not arm, you know, just in case you have props on, because there's a lot of people that still have the props on, you know, like five inch rigs or stuff like that. And, you know, instead of getting cut up, it just disables it. Let me go ahead and show you guys really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect, unplug, you guys should always uh, power cycle after unplugging from beta flight or disconnecting. Telemetry recovered. So as you can see, I can still learn. It's just a safety feature that beta flight has added so you do not get hurt. Now, technically, this is flyable if you like flying with no OSD. So here it is, hovering, and then turtle mode. Now, if you guys are probably wondering, how do you get OSD? Now, to, in order to do that, this is gonna uh, involve some very, very small soldering, and I will show you guys how to do that at the Nibi Drone office. All right, so we made it here at the Nibi Drone office. I have the wire that I need to solder in order for us to get the OSD. Unfortunately, this is how it has to be for right now. Um, but yeah, there here are some photos to help you a little bit more on what, which pads to solder to. First thing we want to go ahead and do is add the flux. As you guys can see, I got the wire soldered up. This is very, very small soldering, so I suggest to be very careful. Um, now I'm going to solder it onto the flight controller, and I believe it is the fifth pad right here. So I'm gonna do that, and then uh, we'll be good to go and have OSD. That was actually that was actually my mistake. I meant the sixth pad, not the fifth. For some reason, I thought it was the fifth because these things are very, very small. But we're just gonna go ahead and check first. Don't put too much. You can call it a bridge. There's nothing about these very, very small pads. 
And then I sneeze. And there we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. But. Now at this point, we're back at the house. And you guys can see after adding the wire, we finally have OSD. Now at this point, this is where you want to go ahead and flash the no OSD or OSD uh, firmware. There's going to be a video link down in the description that will show you how to do that. It's actually by Chris. It also shows you how to... Uh, do that 48 kilohertz uh, ESC flash as well. So just go ahead and check that link um, to get that crystal clear video and 48 kilohertz ESC update. And other than that, we are ready to fly and we're good to go. Whatever you guys do, do not click that button in the back of the VTX. It will break it. It will basically kill the VTX. So do not click that button, please. For the people out there that are having issues with changing the VTX band or channel, through OSD and is not saving or you just can't see it at all. I'm having that issue as well. We are working with the Hummingbird engineers right now to fix that problem. Other than that, this is flyable. And the only way that I, and the way that I actually change the VTX channel is through CLI and Betaflight. But just please be patient out there. Um, we're gonna get these quads working beautiful and perfect soon. Just please be patient and enjoy these new video drone products, guys. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and let me know down in the comments if it was. Hope you guys have an amazing day with these amazing new drone products.